just uh, in a broad sense, what did you hear from Bill Barr yesterday? That he very much wants to depoliticize the Department of Justice and bring it back to its origins as a nonpartisan law enforcement agency. He wants to have credibility. He wants to produce the report according to the law. He's not going to be pressured by the president. He's not going to be pressured by the Democrats. He's not going to be pressured by the Republicans. He's going to do it the right way. That's the projected image that he wants to convey. The other He's thing, the right guy to he, do it. He said it wasn't much of a mystery. I think not a mystery was his quote to officials in uh, as to what they were going to receive from Mueller. He, he said they had an inkling as to what the special counsel was thinking. Right. Why would that be important? Well, because you don't want to fall into the situation where you have to make an important decision within 48 hours without having some advanced knowledge. So I'm sure that Barr knew from Mueller what the thrust of the report was going to be. He had time to think about it, time to talk to his aides about it, and time to make the kind of decision that Attorney General is supposed to make. Remember, special counsel works for the Attorney General. It's the Attorney General who is ultimately responsible for deciding how much of the report to release, how to act on it. Remember, it's the Attorney General who has the authority to indict, to prosecute, to not prosecute. And so I think he's doing exactly the right thing. Uh, two more questions here. He said Mueller declined to review his summary. Is that significant? Well, I don't know why he would have declined to review it. I guess he wanted to be able to have deniability and say, look, it's the attorney general's characterization. Remember, Mueller has to go back to his own staff. He's worked closely with them for a long time. There are going to be a lot of people on the staff who are going to be very upset. They've already leaked to the New York Times some of their upset, particularly those who dissented from the decision not to prosecute for obstruction. I still stick to what I said a long time ago. This is going to be a very critical report of the president when it comes to obstruction, because there's going to be a group of people who are going to say he obstructed justice. You know one key issue that nobody's raised? Are we going to know the names of the people on each side of, yes, we should uh, charge him with obstruction. No, we shouldn't charge him with obstruction. Are we going to know the, the names individual of names of the prosecutors on the team uh -huh. so that we, the public, can assess whether that's a partisan political decision or a neutral prosecutorial decision? Interesting, the Democrats are calling for complete transparency. I haven't heard them call for the names of people on each side of let's charge him, let's not charge him debate. Because that's going to be the headline. Would Once that help out. us better sort out the political nature of the decision? Yes. The and I, you know, it's for me as somebody who's done criminal law for 50 years, it's a terrible question to ask about the partisan nature. Justice Department shouldn't be partisan. It shouldn't be divided over whether you're a pro-Trump, anti-Trump person. You should be able to look at the facts and apply the law to the facts. I don't think that's going to happen. You know, I'm doing an introduction to the Mueller report, so I'm dying to see what it says because I want to get into it in a very detailed way and figure out who's right and who's wrong on the issue of obstruction of justice. Very complicated, very difficult issue. In about an hour, we'll hear more from him uh, when he's for that Senate committee. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Alan Dershowitz in studio. Thanks. Sandra. I am reviewing the conduct of the investigation and trying to get my arms around all the, the aspects of the uh, counterintelligence investigation that was conducted during the summer of 2016. A former top FBI brass now getting hit with an investigation of their own over the handling of the probe into the then candidate Donald Trump's presidential campaign. So what can we expect from Barr's review of the case? Here now to weigh in is former CIA station chief and Fox News contributor Dan Hoffman. Dan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Always a pleasure. So what was your biggest takeaway from some of the testimony yesterday? Well, you know, I think uh, the attorney general has some discretion, legally, some discretion to make redactions, and rightly so, grand jury information, classified information to protect sources and methods. The report will be out for a week, in a week, I should say, uh, and I think it's important for us just to hold uh, and wait to see what the report says. Mm -hmm. What would be disconcerting to me is if we neglect the, the real key findings of the report, which is that Russia hacked into our election, interfered in the election by um, interfering with our social media and networking sites. We need to ensure, I hope, that our elected officials train their sites on the real enemy, which is the Kremlin, the guy in the Kremlin, Vladimir mm -hmm. Putin, and not just on each other. You mentioned the redactions. He also mentioned yesterday uh, that as he's working on these redactions, he's working with the Miller or the Mueller team in doing right. that. 
Right, and that's, that's really important. He needs to make sure that uh, he's accurately representing the information inside the report and that he's respecting the information and ensuring that he causes no legal collateral damage as well as, as damage to our intelligence sources and methods. And also said, you know, when it does come out that it will be co a color-coded system in terms of the redactions. But I want to move on to this, you know, investing the, or invest, uh, investigating the investigators, which he talked about and said that he would be doing. Also, we know that the inspector general is doing this as well, has been doing it. His report, uh, according to the AG, expected to be out in May or June. That was new information as well. What do you think his investigation, the AGs, will include? I think it, it is important to assure the public that the investigation that took place was done in accordance with the law. There's no reason why we shouldn't have that sort of oversight of those who were conducting the FISA and other investigations. Uh, I think that's, that's also a, an important part of this, of this process, and apparently that will be completed by May or June. But again, what, what Vladimir Putin wants sitting in the Kremlin is that we will use all of this as, as partisan political fodder where we, we really need to make sure as well that we focus on countering um, and defending and deterring that Russia threat. You know, and, and with that thought, I mean, it, it does appear that Putin has won because look at the chaos that has ensued since the election. Well, he injected a virus into our political system, and, and there are some, including my old boss, former director of CIA John Brennan, mm -hmm. who, in my view, was a willful carrier of that virus. And all he did was, was Putin's bidding by, um, by, in my view at least, sparking greater partisanship uh, with wild speculation without the facts that just causes us harm. You know, there is some speculation on this, and we have to use that word because there are reports out that Ukraine claims it has evidence of wrongdoing by U.S. Democrats, but that the DOJ doesn't want it. Now, what have you heard about this, and what are your thoughts? Yeah, I read the piece by John Solomon, who's an outstanding investigative journalist, and it's an, important, uh, it's an important issue. I think John, rightly so, was ringing alarm bells. But this one's kind of twisted inside, you know, Ukraine's uh, political system. There are issues in Which Ukraine. Which we know is of, corrupt. Of, right, exactly. And so we need to be in kind of a mistrust but verify, I think, um, phase here where we look very carefully at the facts. But I was one who was... Um, looking with great concern at those who said there was evidence of collusion with the Trump campaign in mm -hmm. Russia when there was none. We need to be equally prudent, I think, in this case as well. Yeah, interesting, though, if it would set up a situation where we had, you know, Russia trying to, you know, kind of sway the election in terms of the candidate they wanted, and then Ukraine kind of trying to sway the election in terms of the candidate that they wanted. Those, of course, uh, being the implications in all this. Right. The world is, is pretty uh, interconnected and, and small, and, and so, uh, you know, there could be ties. In this case, there was some allegation that, that uh, $3 million was funneled to Vice President Biden's son, Hunter. Again, those are, those are serious allegations that someone, I'm sure, will look into. But one of the issues that, that was claimed was that, that the Ukrainian general prosecutor couldn't turn over the information to the FBI in Ukraine. I find that rather preposterous. We have mm -hmm. legats all over the world who, whose job it is to, to take this sort of information and verify it and vet yeah. it. Um, so let's see where this leads. Yeah, verify and vet and let us get on with the business that we need to do here in the United States. Uh, thank you so right. much, Dan. We appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care.